In the early 20th century, Marxism and socialism were at the height of their influence. The Marxists and socialists at the time wanted to impose full economic planning and the complete elimination of markets. They wanted a world in which the means of production, capital goods, were commonly owned. And this would mean a world in which there were no markets, no prices, no private property, and no exchange. In their vision of economic activity, we would decide collectively ahead of time, before we even experimented by producing things and seeing what people wanted, we would try to decide what to produce and how to produce it. In the marketplace, of course, we allow people to go ahead and produce and then figure out after the fact whether they've produced the right things. In addition, in the early 20th century was the Russian Revolution. The Bolsheviks took over power in 1917, and from 1918 to 1920, they attempted to impose their version of a fully planned economy. It ended in failure. And into this environment in 1920, Ludwig von Mises published his famous essay, Economic Calculation in the Socialist Commonwealth. This essay is widely considered today to be a decisive refutation of the possibility of economic planning in the form of Marxism or socialism. What Mises argued was that planning could not rationally allocate resources. The marketplace would do a better job of figuring out what to produce and how to produce it through the use of market prices than would socialist planning. His argument went something like the following. To allocate resources rationally, that is to have an economy that's prosperous and progressive, requires some way of comparing the value of the alternative uses of outputs and inputs. Most inputs can be used to make more than one output, and most outputs can be made with more than one kind of input. So the problem is, how do we decide to which output a given input should be applied, and how do we decide which inputs to use to make a specific output? The Marxists thought that labor or labor time could help us decide this question. But what Mises argued was that labor can't do that because it doesn't provide a common denominator. Different people's labor is different, and there's no way to use labor to compare value across different inputs and outputs. However, Mises argued, this is what market prices can do. Market prices work as what he called aids to the mind in navigating among the countless options for using inputs and producing outputs. But, Mises argued, if you want to have market prices to perform this comparative function, you need to have a market. And if you're going to have a market, people need to be able to exchange. And people, if they're going to exchange, have to have private property. Especially, he pointed out, in the means of production, that is, in capital goods. There can be no rational resource allocation, he argued, without the ability to compare value. Doing so requires those market prices. And without private property and the means of production, there can't be exchange, there can't be markets, there can't be those market prices. Therefore, Mises concluded, rational calculation and rational resource allocation, and therefore the possibility of advanced production and prosperity is impossible under socialism and the common ownership of the means of production. For Mises, market prices are the publicly accessible surrogates for the knowledge and subjective evaluation of market actors. We rely on those prices to know what people want, what they value, and how intensely they value it. We rely on them to make decisions about how to use resources in the most value-enhancing ways. Socialist planners have no way to access that knowledge and to make the necessary comparisons of value. They will be, Mises said, always stumbling in the dark without those aids to the mind of market prices. Mises' argument was, and still is, a devastating reply to the arguments for comprehensive socialist planning. And not just comprehensive socialist planning. Mises' argument applies to smaller scale attempts to abolish prices or to abolish particular markets, such as when government attempts to run a healthcare system. Asking the question, in the absence of genuine market prices, how will we know which outputs to make from which inputs, remains the fundamental challenge to all forms of socialist planning, whether comprehensive or partial.